Do the Ducks have a quarterback controversy brewing? Brian Bennett comes off the bench in the second half to spark the Oregon offense as the Ducks win ugly against the Cougs. The Beavers can't stand prosperity in Salt Lake. Sean Mannion with a trio of picks as the Utah defense made it a long night for the freshman. In Southern California, Stanford and USC trade blows into a third overtime. A seesaw affair had momentum swings aplenty, but the Cardinal had luck on its side yet again. At the Rose Bowl, it was the Prince's court as UCLA runs roughshod over the Bears. In Tempe, the Devils heaped a little more misery on the Buffs' bad season. And on Montlake, the Dogs dug themselves a hole early on. Could they climb back out? We're putting the wraps on October, but we're just beginning this edition of Inside the Pack. is 40 and a half. Blocked. It's blocked. And this is going to be a score for Bussy Cola Touchdown, Oregon. They were all over Wagner. The Ducks special team stars and gets things started for Oregon at Autzen against Washington State. Hello and welcome to this edition of Inside the Pack. Tom Ward here with you for the next 30 minutes. Joined as always by Nick Krupke and our in-studio analyst this week, former Oregon kicker, Mr. X's and O's from the Register Guard and also a former Washington State assistant coach, Ken Woody. Ken, thanks for being here. Nice to be here, Tom. Well, Ken, the Ducks lose the battle of time of possession almost two to one. They get out gained for the game, and the Cougars with 10 more first downs in this game, but it was the special teams and the defense that really brought this W home for the Ducks. It really was. The special teams got them off to a great start. Both times got the crowd going and, and everyone else going when it looked really flat. Uh, but I think the Washington State quarterback, his two interceptions deep in the red zone, did them in. Had they been able to get some points out of that, the game uh, likely would have been a lot closer if not a different outcome. Yeah, both interceptions right near the goal line. Uh, all the talk after this game, though, was about this so-called quarterback controversy with Brian Bennett, Brian Bennett starting the second half. I mean, do you feel there's a quarterback controversy there? It didn't really seem like it was to Darren Thomas after the game. Well, I don't think so. I think Bennett has proven that he's got what it takes to move the football team. Uh, if I'm Chip Kelly, I'm, I'm thinking that Darren Thomas gives me a chance to start with somebody who's reliable, who has the experience, and if, if it turns out he's not uh, totally with it, I can bring somebody who can pick up the pace of the game, which Bennett has done the last three games. So I think they're pretty solid there, and for the benefit of the uh, experience, Thomas is the guy. Well, in Salt Lake City, Nick, the Beavers just revert back to that early season form. All kinds of mistakes. They give up six sacks. Sean Mannion looks terrible, and uh, they only managed 32 yards rushing on the ground. That was in thank thanks in part to those six sacks. Yeah, six sacks, negative 59 mm -hmm. off those net yards. But again, you talk about the no-run game, and they just haven't been able to win all year when they haven't been able to get at least 100 yards rushing. Agnew puts it on the turf for the third time and just his fourth game coming back playing. And you look at just what they did, boy, off defensively, boy, where Mike Riley said this might be the most physical defense we'll play all season. Certainly it looked to be uh, at that point, and now you stare down a test with Stanford and Andrew Luck, and boy, no ease in sight for Oregon State now. Certainly not. Just when you think you have the Beavers figured out. You don't. You don't. <laughs> but another eventful week off the field for the Ducks saw cornerback Cliff Harris stopped by police yet again for driving without a license. And as a result, the junior was suspended indefinitely again by head coach Chip Kelly. On the bright side, Darren Thomas and LaMichael James made their returns for the Ducks against the Cougars. Thomas still wearing a brace on that left knee he injured two weeks ago while LaMichael had a brace on his right arm protecting that injured elbow where he suffered the dislocation. The improved Cougs came into Odson having lost three in a row and looked to be a long day for the Cougs after the opening possession. Avery Patterson takes it off the foot of punter Daniel Wagner, Basico Lacombo, scoop and score 25 yards, 8-0 Oregon after the two-point conversion. 50-year senior Marshall Lobelstahl started for the injured Jeff Toole again. Terrence Mitchell, though, Kicks off the Red Lobster in the red zone. Mitchell takes it 36 yards out to the 38. T. Mitch's first career INT as teammates swarm him. Second quarter, now 8-3 Ducks. Cougs seemingly poised to score again. This time, Lobelstahl forces one. Tipped and picked by Eddie Pleasant. His first pick of the season, and he, he takes it back for a nice return. Duck D has been lights out in the red zone as of late. That led to this. Thomas. The knee looking healthy on the scramble, stays behind the line of scrimmage and lobs one up for Lavagier Tuane. He pulls it in, gets a nice block from Justin Hoffman to free himself up. 
55 yards. It's 15-3 Ducks. Just before the half, DT flushed out again, trying to make something happen, happen as Chip went for it on fourth down, but his second tip ball INT. DeMonte Horton grabs it, and then he turns up field. Horton eventually makes it to the end zone, winds up a 76-yard pick six, Oregon up 15-10 at the half. Third quarter, Brian Bennett took over for DT as he started the second half. And it took just three plays in 44 seconds to break it open. Bennett to DeAnthony Thomas, looking like Barry Sanders turning defenders around. 45-yard score, 22-10 Oregon. After a Wazoo field goal, more from LT. Bennett connects with number 80, 19-yard touchdown, a 14-play, 77-yard drive. Oregon starting to pull away 29-13 after the Cougars score to cut it to 29-20. The Quack Mamba does it again, takes the kickoff at the seven, breaks a tackle, and look at that, turns on the Jets. His 11th TD breaks Derek LaVille's mark from 1986 for most touchdowns in a season by an Oregon freshman. We go to the fourth quarter, and now 36 to 20, Oregon. Kenyon Barner with a 28-yard burst to the end zone to help put this one away. And on a day where the Ducks were not perfect, certainly far from it, they are able to get it done. 43-28, the Ducks league leading, 17th straight conference win, a FBS best, 21st consecutive home win. That is just two away from the school record of 23, set between 97 and 2001. After missing those past couple of games, the Michael James came back, ran for 53 yards, 13 carries. Not real big, but still a nice clip of more than four yards per carry. And boy, DeAnthony, 262 all-purpose yards, getting it done everywhere again. DeAnthony's certainly a talent. Ken, this is one of those games where the offense struggled to move the ball. That's going to happen from time to time in football, but it really, the special teams and the defense made it happen. Well, you know, this defense this year, Tom, is a sticky defense. You just can't get away from them. They've, they've been playing, I think, better and better game by game. They gave up a lot of yards yesterday, but, you know, a good defense is going to stop them when they get in the red zone. That's just exactly what the Ducks did. Yeah, we see third quarter here. Deion Jordan beginning to get into the act, comes in and makes a nice tackle. He's a great athlete, very talented. You see him there protecting his legs as a good linebacker would. Now he's in a down stance. Defensive lineman, watch his spin move. Engages the tackle, then comes inside. I mean, that's a great athlete against just an average athlete, and he'll win that one every time. And Aliotti will look to try to line that up whenever he can. Certainly, and then Avery Patterson, next play here, coming in off the corner blitz. Nice uh, camouflage here. Yes, and majority of the uh, good pass pressure that Ducks get is from the outside, and I think that's uh, good for the Ducks, but in a way it's a little bit of a weakness. Watch Jordan here. He comes upfield, he's got the quarterback Contained to his side. Oh, he's going around. He's got contained on the other side too. It looks yeah, like. Yeah, great pursuit by Jordan, all the way around. As they just like they teach you in practice, they've got the lanes. After the game, Terrell Turner, one of the guys, saying, "Hey, Deion Jordan is the heart and soul of this football team." Someone said, "The heart and soul, really?" Yeah, absolutely. And you don't see many defensive linemen who are fast enough, good enough athletes to cover on kickoffs, and he does that too. Well, certainly a good day for the Oregon defense as a lot of the guys maybe admitting that the defense and special teams bailed out the offense on this day. But after hanging 551 yards and 44 points on the Cougars a week ago, the Beavs had a little pep in their step. Could they keep it going as they made the trek from Corvallis to Salt Lake City? The Utes' Kyle Whittingham and the Beavers' Mike Riley renewing old acquaintances in Oregon State's first visit to Rice Eccles since they lost on a field goal at the gun in 2008. Three zip Utes. After one quarter, second quarter now after a great punt return by Utah, John Hayes drops back and lets one fly. Dre's Anderson right between Rashad Reynolds and Jordan Poyer, 35 yards, make it 10-0 Utah. Later, Sean Mannion throws his 11th interception of the season. Mo Lee gets him a three interception game for Mannion. He was also sacked six times. Utah wasn't going to let the opportunity slip. Two plays later, John White, the fourth, reverses field and he's in. Six-yard TD, Beavers down 17-0, a career day for White after Oregon State went three and out. The Utes, well, they kept pounding away behind White. Check this one out, 60 yards right up the gut as the Beavers gave up 225 yards on the ground on this night as White was running downhill all night. And then Hayes adds another TD. This one to Devontae Christopher. 80 yards in five plays on the touchdown, 24 zip at the half. The Beavers didn't get on the board until the first play of the fourth. Mannion to Marcus Wheaton, his first TD of the season, three yards, two-point conversion, no good, so it's 24-6. Finally, the Beavers were able to break through and force a fumble. 
as the Utes coughed it up, the Beavers jump on it, and Oregon State maybe with some momentum, but any road momentum they had, they gave right back. Malcolm Agnew's third fumble in just his fourth game as a Beaver came on the one yard line. It led to a safety for the Beavers' final two points, but it was not enough for O State as the Beavers once again lose in Salt Lake City. 27-8, the final Utah's first conference win leaves Colorado as the last Pac-12 team without a win. Yeah, one week after his career game so far, Manning just one touchdown to those three picks, 27 to 49 passing, sacked six times again for that negative 59. He said, hey, I probably held on to the ball a little too long sometimes. That run game, just 32 net on 26 carries. Utah had 225. So again, now they come back home. Homecoming, 1230 with Stanford. Utah broke it open in that second quarter by scoring 21 points in a seven minute span. The Beavers had just no answer. After Oregon State went three and out, Utah wasted no time going 47 yards in three plays. They did it in the air and on the ground, especially with John White, who again had a career game 205 on the ground. The Beavers had a tough time bringing him down. And after another Sean Mannion pick, the Utes had great field position and they took advantage time and time again. The misdirection making the Beavers pay on there from White there. Maybe a little over aggressive on that play, but it took Utah just two plays on the drive after another three and out. White again after a six yard carry. This 60 yarder just really hurt him. Took just five plays to go 80 yards. The Beavers saw a three-point deficit explode to a 24-0 score at halftime. Obviously hard to bounce back after that, but the Utes certainly seemed to be the aggressor in that game after they were pounded by a very lowly Cal team one week prior where they ran the ball last week just 25 yards. The Beavers can look only at themselves. Five false start penalties. You miss a chance to score on the opening drive with a missed field goal, albeit it was 50 yards away. Marcus Wheaton dropped a couple of balls, and one of them was a should-to-be touchdown. So, uh, Again, stepping yeah. back after a week of looking so good. Well, lots of blame to go around on yeah. the Oregon State team. When you go on the road, especially to a place like Rice Eccles, you have to be better than the home team, and they were certainly far from that. But the Ducks are up to sixth in the latest AP Top 25 poll, and they continue to be the highest-ranked one-loss team in the nation. Still to come on ITP, Oregon may or may not have a quarterback controversy, but one thing is certain, these special teams and defense were the reasons for Oregon's sixth win of the year. It's the offense, sometimes it's defense. We just got to pick each other up and just keep playing. Plus, it was a shootout in L.A. between the Cardinal and Trojans at the Coliseum with plenty of ups and downs. And as always, lots more Beavers, Ducks, and the rest of the Pac-12 online all the time at our website, InsideThePac.com. We're back after this. <laughs>